my problem in Detroit Detroit is a wonderful community probably for that reason I have been subjected to its kindness and goodness for over 40 years despite my best efforts to try and leave occasionally Divine Providence and the Rebbe's instruction kept me here. There is a famous story, famous among the Chassidim, not so famous among the non Chassidim. But the point of the story is to indicate how one has to be careful in one's activities and has to be introspective. I've told you about my, my obsession with the cost of Lubavitch meat and the fact that Lubavitch meat is not cut in the local butcher shop still hasn't been cut despite the fact that the beef Lubavitch beef is said to be excellent why are they only prepackaged? Why is there no cut up Lubavitch beef? It would be apparently cheaper. And if it isn't cheaper to, to cut it here, then why, for the most part, is the cut up prepackaged chicken more expensive coming from the same plant in general? And that happens to be a tax on those of us who eat Lubavitch meat and only want Lubavitch Hersha. And I still am asking the powers that be to look into this. The last I heard was the previous Yoshev Rosh said to one of the mashgichim we're not big enough to go ahead and determine uh, what the star k does or says and therefore we're just going to go by the star k does the star k have a vested interest in bashing lubavitch meat of course it does because lubavitch meat is trusted by people who know Lubavitch, know Lubavitch a shochtim, and there's a certain number of people who would trust those shochtim um, <coughs> and the hashgacha that would allow for star K kosher, which to this point hasn't flourished as much in the meat business, this would give them an, an opening and a ready-made Kehillah. So do they have a vested interest? Of course they do. And I have gone in through the, um, the give and take of this, discovered that there is no basis for the attacks as far as I know. And if anybody has any information that contradicts what I'm saying, I'm happy to uh, publicly renounce what I just said. I went and I, I tr tried to find out what the arguments were years ago. I checked with the Hashgoche, with both the Mashgichim and the Rav HaMachshe and came to the conclusion that it's a false accusation. There were problems with what is called Somas Hagidim, 
where the um, nerves come together on the, the knee of the chicken, where there are large weighted chickens. For the most part, Lubavitcher Shrita doesn't have the large weighted chickens, number one. And the numbers of problems in the Lubavitch Shrita wasn't any more or uh, statistically significant than any of the other Shritas because they were basically cut t taking them from the same source. So whatever number of problems there might have been in Lubavitch, that equal per case or per hundred cases existed in the other Shrita or the other Shritas. So the whole accusation and the whole thing is just economics and sinna, hatred and jealousy, for which there is no cure unless people do tshuva. And I guess I have to do tshuva also, so we all have to do tshuva, but those people who said that if you use Lubavitch meat, they have to cash your dishes, Asidim litin es hadin. In the future, you will have to face God and face the poskim who will ask you the basis of it. And I know you don't respect my thoughts and my opinions. It's okay. But I've learned your day just as you have. And there is no basis for what you said. Absolutely none at all. And Maman if it's shchitas oiv de avede zore, then none of the hachshedim are good. And if there's a question of, of kashras, so adrab, repeat, reveal the source of the kashras problem. I went and examined it and found it to be lacking any kind of truth. Problem is, Star K wishes to make themselves as the overseers of the Bhavit shchita. Rabbi Azdava is not any less of a Talmud Chacham and Rabbi Hainam, and I've met both of them. They're both big Talmud Chachamim, and Rabbi Azdub is no less a Talmud Chachim. And uh, he would have been a Talmud Chachim in Lakewood, he would be a Talmud Chachim in, in Ponivit, he would be a Talmud Chachim in Slavotke, he'd be a Talmud Chachim in anywhere in the world. He's a big Talmud Chachim. He's the Rav Amarshi. So, you have a problem, he's the, the, the place to go to. And he says, it's kosher. And this, then they've gone through the protocols and they've done the exact protocol as anybody else does. I've checked with other people on the side. There is no such thing. Okay. So much for the shrita problem, shrita issue. Yesterday, I have to admit, I did something wrong. I didn't do it deliberately, but in the process of doing this, I discovered the same problem that exists in the Shrita, existing in the outside community. I drive a bus, not for work. I drive a bus because my wife's preschool had a bus driver who got into an accident, could no longer drive the children. The children have to be bused on a daily basis or else the school closes. So I'm the driver. And from the drive, I went yesterday to purchase some things, at Borenstein, Siemens, One Stop Kosher. For those who are on the outside, these are local Detroit institutions. At One Stop Kosher, um, they have parking places that are open far away from the store. Yours truly happens to have, sometimes my feet work, sometimes they don't work, sometimes the back doesn't work. I like to park in the handicapped park place because I have a sticker for that, but not when I'm driving the bus. I don't have a sticker for the bus. So I try to get a parking place close by. There was two cars parked. There was ample space to get in. Unfortunately, the van or the small bus is over 20 feet long and it was difficult to get in on those angles. It was difficult to angle to get in and I blocked someone. Blocking that person when I came, I was trying to see how much I had blocked, see if I could maneuver this. 
the lady was already taking pictures of my van with the driver's with the, with the, with the license plate. And she was telling me, and ordering me to move the, the van elsewhere. Now, she was about the same age as my granddaughter. Mid-twenties. Maybe late-twenties. I doubt it. And she was ordering someone almost three times her age to move. Now, what's the psychology of it? One of two things, either you're in a big rush, or you're very wealthy, or you have an important job where you order other people around. I wasn't going to get into an argument or a fight. I tried to move the bus. Unfortunately, it was a very tight spot, <clears throat> and we have large mirrors that are supposed to be in a certain position which I didn't want to have moved because getting them exact can put the children in, getting them exact takes a, a, a long time and not in the right position could put children in danger. Moving out my mirrors hit the side mirrors and I realized if I would try I'd probably hit the, the glass or the body of the car with my mirrors over the side of my car, in my van. Did the best I could, and I gave a six to 12 inch space for the car to go back. Unfortunately, she couldn't go enter on the driver's seat. She refused to go in on the passenger seat. Well, I saw that there was enough room to go back up, so I offered my services to back the car up if she was afraid or she didn't want to go from the passenger seat. She refused to let me enter her car. Perhaps I might have been wearing something inappropriate. I don't think so, but maybe I was wearing something inappropriate. Perhaps she thought she saw a lice all over me. I don't think so. But this is a person who has no patience, has disdain for others, a disrespect for anyone who disagrees with her, and has a high level of demands upon others. <clears throat> we all learn Hilchas Deus. Some of us learn Sifrei Musar. I learn Sifrei Chassidus. I don't think about the evil of people, so it's hard for me to think about them, and I don't want to think about them, and I don't dream about the evil of other people, and it's hard for me to even get angry at people because I'm not allowed to even think badly about another Jew. So, whoever you are, young lady, I forgive you. But supposedly you learned Hilchis Loshen Hode. Beyond the laws of Loshen Hode, the basis of Loshen Hode isn't the evil of Leisamed al Damri Yecho. The basis of Loshen Hode beyond Leisamed al Damri Yecho is Vihavto Lariacha Kemaycho. It's based upon respect and love of a fellow Jew. And apparently you missed the message when I suggested that you go in the passenger seat, you said that's not acceptable. Excuse me? I've been trying for five minutes to move my car, my van. I see that I can't. You're telling me what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. Because it's inconvenient for you. Do you really think that people try to make your life miserable or difficult? You think that a person like myself is interested in making it difficult for your car to get out. And when I offered to take the car out, you refused. Even while on the right there were three empty spots that you could have turned the car there very easily 
without having to back up. At any rate, for all of you listening out there, take a lesson. Before you open your mouth, think about it. Think about what you say, think about how you react. And think about whom you're talking to. Because one day, you may say it to your own Rav or Rosh Hashiva. I know I'm not your Rav, but I am a Rav in town for 41 years. And my children, grandchildren, are known to be Torah observant and Tamid Chachomim and Chassidim Yerei Shemayim's. And I don't think that I deserve that kind of treatment by a tzutzikl, a third my age. And even if I did because I deserved it, it wasn't for you to decide to be the one to do that. The basis of Lashon Hod is obviously soil. Not just keep your mouth closed so you can get a little habo. The purpose is we're supposed to care for each other. I hope that you will care for others in the future.